Take it away. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Bala. Uh, and today I'll be presenting our research, our research work done at Autodesk Research, uh, Loki, which is a system for facilitating remote instruction of physical tasks using bidirectional mixed reality telepresence. So for a long time, uh, physical tasks have been taught and guided primarily through in-person interactions. It allows both users uh, to take different perspectives to learn and teach using the different tools and objects present in their shared environment. Nowadays, learning and guidance using video calls are more common, but teaching through these is hard. They may not give the users uh, the freedom of different perspectives and the flexibility to adopt different styles of instruction. Mixed reality style guidance like this could be useful in live instruction. Say a learner shown here wants to learn a very specific task from a very specific instructor who is far away. How would they do it? Uh, the spatial and immersive nature of mixed reality offers some promise. So in this work, we explore on how we could better design and use mixed reality systems to support this. We specifically introduced Loki, which is a two-way symmetrical MR system. To simplify the convention here, anything belonging to the learner, such as their space, avatar, and annotations are colored in green, and that of the instructor in orange. And they are situated in two different locations. In Loki, both users wear a mixed reality headset. The headset allows users to either be entirely in virtual reality or be in a pass-through augmented reality. Next, it provides users with 2D videos that are the current standard norm for teaching physical tasks, along with a control UI that each of them can interact with. Besides these standard tools, Loki provides each user with depth and spatial data using point clouds. This helps them choose their own viewpoint and enhances the 3D perception of the tasks. These point clouds are captured by depth cameras like Kinect, that are placed in corresponding spaces. So whenever a remote user views your space, they are represented as virtual avatars in your space. So for instance, if the instructor is viewing the learner's point cloud here, they are, represent they are represented in the learner's AR environment using an orange avatar. This gives an idea about scale, position, as well as macro gestures of the instructor in the, con in the context of that part of the learner's environment that the instructor observes. This can happen either in augmented reality or in virtual reality, where the instructor only focuses on the learner's environment and interacts with it in an immersive manner. Similar interface exists for the instructor too. Loki also provides annotation tools. Like for example, one can annotate a live point cloud shown in the left, and these annotations appear in the space with that associated with that point cloud. And finally, recording playback tools allow the instructor and learner to rewind in time and review a performance together in a shared virtual reality space. It is important to note that both the instructor and learner have access to their own such interface. So Loki is symmetrical and bidirectional. So from viewpoint of a user, say learner, this is what the Loki interface would be like, with a local view of your own space in green, a remote view of the instructor's space in orange, and an indication of where the instructor is looking at your space with an avatar. Here's the screen capture of the same from the actual interface. This picture also shows two different kinds of annotations that one can make in Loki. One on their own physical environment that appears as solid lines, and the other in the hologlyph that appears as outline lines. Here's a quick snippet of Loki in action, in which an instructor is teaching sculpting to a remote learner who first observes it in virtual reality. You can see that the remote learner can move around in the instructor space and choose different viewpoints. The instructor sees them as a green virtual avatar in their space. The learner first carefully observes the instructor's actions. And once they have gotten an idea of it, they then switch to an augmented reality view and begin to work along with the instructor while using their point cloud as a reference on the side. Let's now look into some prior related research works to Loki. Early researchers have addressed this bigger domain of guiding and teaching physical tasks using novel interfaces such as augmented reality, virtual reality, and other modalities. But these rely on asynchronous learning and tutorial generation, and many of these focus only on the psychomotor phase of learning. Remote live guidance of physical tasks is not, not a new domain either, and prior works have shown the need and value of extensions such as tracked objects, spatial annotations, and access to multiple viewpoints. But these approaches often rely on just a single modality of data, such as 2D video and annotations, and the spatial nature of this task is often lost or reduced. Recently, improved software and hardware has made it possible to map 
manipulate and transmit in real time the 3D spatial data of a scene. This provides an additional channel of information. And recent works have used this information for the purposes of general telepresence. These works show value and promise in using mixed reality for the purpose of live instruction, though these works do not specifically focus on it and also do not offer the flexibility to easily support the different stages of learning. Now, what does it mean by the flexibility to support different learning stages and why is it important? Collins et al.'s model of cognitive apprenticeship talks about the changing role of an instructor in transforming a learner from being a novice to an expert. It starts with the instructor modeling a desired action while the learner observes, then getting the learner to perform, coaching them and offering feedback, gradually scaffolding the tasks to build and remove the support as learner performs and learns the tasks, then the learner articulates their gained knowledge. Finally, they jointly review their performance and allow them to reflect upon it. After that, the learning still continues for the learner as they independently explore their newly learned skill sets. While this seems unidirectional, it's important to note that in practice, one may switch from any stage of learning to any other stage. And a live instruction system for teaching physical tasks should be able to support that. But current systems only support at most few of these stages and also do not allow for easy transitions between them. In Loki, we allow users to switch across these. For instance, consider here a learner who is interested in learning guitar. They view the instructor's live point cloud and annotate it to ask queries. Instructor sees the learner's avatars and annotations and discusses the relevant guitar instructions with them. They then switch modes in Loki so that they jam and practice together live while having their partner's point cloud in full scale placed in front of them. The instructor hears an incorrect note, so they stop the learner and together they switch modes to play back the learner's recorded point clouds and discuss it in a shared virtual reality space. But how do we generally design such MR systems that allow users to flexibly adopt different styles of instruction? To answer this question in a structured manner, we build on prior works and formulate a design space that would enable different styles of remote instruction. Our design space has four dimensions. First is the perceived space. In the process of instruction, a learner or the instructor might be interested in seeing either their own local space or the remote partner space. Next is time. The time dimension refers to when the data was captured. The data could be live data, in which case the users see a real-time view of their own local or remote environment. It could also be a recorded one that allows for collaborative review and reflection of past actions. The display configuration refers to how the users can see and interact with their space. In this work, we explore two such means. One is augmented reality, while, which allows presenting virtual elements and data in the user's physical environment. And the second is virtual reality that eliminates distractions from the real environment. Other display configurations are also possible, but outside the scope of our current work. Finally, the data modality dimension refers to the type of data collected and used to convey the information. One is spatial data capture using which the users can explore the 3D nature of the instruction, and the other is high resolution 2D feeds. Again, there are many other data streams that can be used, but in this work, we limit to these two. It's important to note that both the instructor and learner have their own such grid. From learning theory, we infer that interfaces for both the instructor and learner need to be flexible enough to support these multiple different modes of interaction. Let's now look into some interaction experience of Loki. Loki conveys spatial information using hologlyphs. Hologlyphs contain point clouds and corresponding 2D video of a space. They also contain any annotations that are made in them. The point clouds can be placed in the real environment, implementing an augmented reality style usage. These hologlyphs can also be positioned, scaled, and navigated using VR hand controllers. Different video feeds can be accessed by clicking on the video. And when a remote partner views your live space, they are shown as an abstracted virtual avatar. Loki's UI also allows toggling between an augmented reality view and a VRU using the control UI. In Loki, annotations made in point cloud appear in real environment and vice versa. Now let's see a sample usage of Loki for the remote peer learning of a specific workshop task. This would be an example of coaching. A novice user here is trying to make right angle joints, but they are unsure of which tool to use. 
So using Loki, they called a remote peer for help. The remote peer uses their control UI to switch modes to virtual reality and then jump in, jumps into the learner's environment in VR to examine all the tools and point the learner towards the right one. So in our design space, the instructor here first needs to understand the learner's issue and their environment. So they need to perceive the learner's environment which is remote to them, while the learner needs to see their own local environment. This is a live data that both users see, so both of them operate in a live mode of the time dimension. The instructor operates in VR to focus only on the relevant spatial data and in the 2D video of the remote environment. This prevents distractions and occlusions by the elements of their AR environment. And the learner operates in AR, viewing the entire spatial data of the local environment directly with their own eyes. Depending on the nature of coaching, this configuration could vary. Now the instructor understands the learner's issue and identifies to them the right tool to use, but the learner doesn't know how to use the tool. So they invite the learner to their environment and show a variety of right angle joints that they had previously made in their own workshop space. Now they need to teach the learner on how to use the tool that they had pointed the learner towards. To do that, they use a tool in their own environment that works in a similar fashion. They first explain how it works and then model the actions that the learner needs to do in order to create the joints. If the learner has any doubts, the learner makes any required annotations and asks them verbally. These annotations appear in instructor's AI environment along with the learner's avatar that represents the learner's point of view. Now this is an example of a modeling phase. Here both users still deal with live data, but now the instructor perceives the local space and is an augmented reality, whereas the learner perceives the remote environment of the instructor and views them in virtual reality. Now consider different, different task of teaching to sculpt remotely. In the modeling phase, the instructor sculpts and the learner gets to observe. Now the learner has some doubts to ask. Bo bo so both of them switch to a collaborative VR space which has the recorded hologlyph. The learner first navigates to that part of the instructor's recording that they are interested in. Then both of them go to the 3D subspace from their viewpoint of interest. They both then review and discuss the sculpting process the, the instructor used. The annotations here act as a tool to facilitate this discussion. This is similar to the reflection phase of learning where we review and, reflect, review and reflect on prior performance. The data being dealt with is recorded and is seen in VR using point clouds and 2D video. It can be seen that even within a single training session, the ability to switch fluidly between these design space dimensions is very beneficial and Loki allows that. Besides these two scenarios, we use Loki with two other scenarios, one being teaching of guitar that we mentioned earlier where we carried out stages of modeling, articulation and reflection. And the other is to coach a baseball bat swing, where we carried out the learning stages of active coaching, reflection, and scaffolding. Now let's quickly go through how Loki is implemented. As we now know, there are two spaces. Each space has a Vive VR system, em enabled with a pass-through augmented reality using Z-mini stereo camera. PCs of the two spaces handle all the computation and are LAN connected. And a pair of Kinect's depth map, dep uh, Kinect depth maps, 3D maps to each space and transmits it with the help of Microsoft's Room Alive toolkit. And finally, wireless Vive 3D position trackers are attached to Kinex and allow dynamic real-time setup of Kinex to produce a coherent point cloud. This is the entire setup of Loki. We evaluated Loki and utility of these mode transitions with an informal qualitative evaluation with eight participants who used Loki for 30 minutes each and learned a foam carving task to create a 3D pyramid. From the user study, we found that participants appreciated Loki's ability to combine benefits of different modes and features such as annotations, point clouds, live and collaborative review, and liked the ease at which they could transition across them. More details of the study has been discussed in the paper. In summary, in this work, we have presented the design space for exploring the design of systems and interactions for mixed reality-based live instruction. We then contribute a system that allows users to operate and transition to different configurations of the design space and thus better support learning at different stages. In future, there are three main verticals that we think could be interesting to explore. Currently, annotations are, for, are useful for static objects, but with moving objects, they become misaligned. Exploring spatially and temporarily consistent, consistent annotations would be interesting. Scaling Loki to multiple user interactions. 
as well as exploring other display configurations and data modalities would be interesting verticals to explore. With this, we thank Roya for being a super user of Loki and helping us with testing and carrying out different Loki scenarios used in the paper. We thank Justin for assistance with figures and for feedback at different stages. I would now be happy to take any questions. Okay, that's a really cool project, thank you. So please ask questions. We have a little bit of time. Hi, very cool talk. Um, I was wondering, can you comment on the importance of visual quality and visual coverage? So you've done all these uh, the studies, and I think there's a lot of cool stuff there. And I'm wondering, does it matter that we still have a long way to go before it actually looks good? <laughs> I totally agree, right? Um, so currently, the resolution of data offered by depth cameras is not very precise enough to understand fine-grained uh, um, physical activities that are like uh, that involves like you know few millimeters of uh, resolution but it's useful for activities which involves larger objects and objects that are not reflective because reflective objects are currently not very well mapped by depth cameras there's definitely a long way to go but the, i believe that these set of interactions would still hold with uh, the depth cameras of the future Uh, thank you so much for your nice presentation. So uh, my question is, have you measured uh, the user's uh, satisfactions, like when they are going to use the Loki? So how they will feel or how, uh, have you done any, anything about that? So we primarily, uh, it, it was a qualitative study. So uh, we, I think the, the, um, go, the goal of the study was primarily to measure if Loki, if users were able to use the Loki system to successfully carry out a task, and that they were able to do, th they were able to do that, and they were able to successfully use uh, Loki. Um, a particular feature that, or I mean, in general, the feature that so, users liked at Loki uh, is the ability to transition across these different modes. Right? It's not just um, one user is continuously teaching and uh, the other user is continuously listening, but the uh, the interactive experience offered by Loki is something that the users liked. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Um. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. That was very, very cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.